Hi, it's Friday. It's three o'clock. Welcome to Together Unlocked, brought to you as always by Together 2012. We're a disabled-led arts organisation based in the main London 2012 host borough of Newham, and we deliver an annual festival in Disability History Month, which starts next week, as well as a free year-round programme of creative activities for disabled people and anybody else who wants to join in. Currently, we're presenting all of our programme online. This is part of it. So I'm Ju Gosling. I'm an artist and artistic director of Together 2012. With me, locked down as indeed we have been since March, not just since yesterday, in my East London studio is our chair, the artist and documenter, Julie Newman. We're going to give you a bit more audio description in a minute. And also, because it's Friday, we're dressed up to go out to stay in. That's a feature that we started at the beginning of the first lockdown. We're all in the shielding group. So in any case, our lockdown lasted till the 1st of August. So although we're staying in, we dress up to go out. That might be for a real occasion or it might be imaginary. So we're going to go over to the West Midlands to introduce our hosts there. They're going to give you some audio description and they're also going to talk about what they're dressed up to go out to stay in to do. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Friday in the first show within lockdown two, as they seem to be calling it. So I am Robin Sergener. I am business director at Together 2012 um, and uh, an artist known as Angry Fish. Yeah, we are comfortably um, couched in our house in uh, West Midlands in Sutton Coalfield. And typically now we can't go out. The sun is shining. I mean, not that we've been out much anyway. So today, um, as ever, I have silvery grey hair. I have um, silvery grey eyelashes, I reckon, I bring in today as well. No rimmed glasses uh, with black arms. Um, and I am now sporting a three-day-old silvery grey beard. So there's obviously a theme going on there. Um, and I've got blue eyes. Uh, and I am wearing a black round necked t-shirt um, but this is where i'll move into my wearing something to go out to stay in um it says on it tonight there's going to be a jailbreak um it, so it's black but then all the images in white in white writing again it says tonight there's going to be a jailbreak there's a picture of a bass guitar um uh, a jail window kind of you know a hole in the wall with bars in it and an arm with a tattoo of lizzie on it um that's the word lizzie not the queen by the way um <laughs> uh, and, and and i thought it was kind of apt really i mean you know thin lizzie are no longer a band haven't been for a while but um they are a fantastic band but i just thought the whole idea of there being a jailbreak but they're not being or a lockdown break which we will very much not be doing and will be adhering absolutely to the new legislation as prescribed by the government. So that's, I will be staying in and I will play some Thin Lizzy. Hi, I'm Josh Sergener and I'm a PhD student and host of Together Unlocked. Josh, uh, can you get a bit closer to your bike or rather get your mic a bit closer to you, please? Yes. Uh, and then today I am, I haven't forgotten to get dressed. It's part of my difference grow up. <laughs> I am wearing my pajamas. Um, I am wearing a very fluffy, um, grey and white striped um, top and a grey brown something or other coloured uh, dressing <laughs> gown. Um, I have blonde hair, blondish hair uh, that's a little bit messy. Blonde. Uh, and then a slightly ginger, well, a very ginger beard but with some slight growth. Um, now, the reason I'm wearing my pyjamas today isn't that I forgot to get dressed. Uh, but yesterday um, was uh, bonfire night, I think. Yeah, fifth. Um, so I am wearing, for when I used to live in Sheffield, when I was still actually able to physically go to university, um, I lived at the top of a very large hill. So through the windows at the back of my house, or the flat, um, I could see kind of out right across Sheffield and the kind of the Hillsborough football stadiums and some of the kind of the big major parks in the city. Um, so around this time of year, I would get to watch kind of six, seven, eight, 
professional fireworks displays across the weekend um, without having to pay for them and having to go outside and getting a neck ache to look at them. I could quite happily sit on my bed in my pyjamas with a nice cup of tea um, and watch all of these kind of amazing fireworks displays. So I am dressed up in my pyjamas to sit on my bed and watch some fireworks out of the window. And I can't help thinking that although all displays are banned this year, the chances are quite high. You'll probably see some. Oh, so, I, I was just going to say there were, I, I don't know if people have got hold of professional fireworks that they wouldn't normally, you know, because displays that were planned can't happen. But we had some like, I mean, house shaking fireworks going off last night. I mean, they looked amazing. Yeah, they looked really cool. But, but I mean, yeah, just, just, earth shaking yes i mean i think judy made a very powerful plea on wednesday in terms of dogs we have two assistance dogs with us here and also random cats there are five currently in my base because judy's two are here too um robin and josh have cats too which may well be wandering in and out at the moment so if you want to know anything about the dogs and cats that have been upset by the fireworks have a look at the Together Unlocked page on our website and on the pull down menu, you'll find something called Together Animal Hosts. There's also, most importantly, well, depending on your position, perhaps not if you're a cat, but for everybody else, the first thing that you get to is a highlights and links page. There'll be all of the videos and links to everything we talk about on the show on that page. So, Julie, who are you? What do you look like and what are you dressed up to go out to stay and to do? <laughs> Hi, I'm Julie. Um, I'm the chair of Together 2012. Uh, I've got um, gold and silver hair. I've got dark rimmed glasses. I do not have blue eyes. I have got brown eyes, actually hazel eyes. Uh, I'm wearing a black t-shirt with a, a um, yellow and orange motif of a of a fox dancing in the air upside down, looking rather bonfire-ish. Um, and I'm dressed up to go out with my assistance dog, Precious. We're going to the Magic Forest. And we're going to, we've had an invitation to watch the uh, fairies dance around the mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't think I'd even better inquire more than that. Judy, I think you might have your microphone back to front and that's why it's going slightly peculiar. So I've got, well, where shall I start? I have a hennad red corona crop as cut by myself, so no more. I've got green eyes with black plastic framed glasses. I've got black wrist braces and silver coloured jewellery. I have a long sleeve white t-shirt and over the top of it, I have a short sleeved kind of orangey yellow t-shirt and embroidered on it says, we've only just begun with a heart. And I'm dressed up to go out to stay in to go to the beautiful Octopus Festival because today marks the start of five weeks of fantastic free disabled led arts activities from London in terms of the Together Festival and the beautiful Octopus Club Festival and Liverpool in terms of Dada Fest. It's also Caption, it, caption Awareness Week next week. So there's lots of free captioned plays as well. So we're going to tell you about that really throughout the day. But first of all, Julie's dog for the second week running, I believe, is dressed up to go out to stay in. So I'm going to pop a photo up on screen and Julie can tell us more about it, including some audio <laughs> description. Precious is a little black dog with quite a long snout, little brown beady eyes and a, a brown sort of leathery nose, a little bit white round the muzzle. Uh, and over the eyes. She's a cross between a poodle and a Westie, which is why she has the, the white coming through. She's currently wearing a little hat, uh, which is supposed to be a lion's mane, but we looked at it together and we decided it was a teddy bear outfit. And she's going to come with me to the forest um, dressed as a teddy bear to watch the fairies. Yep, there's certainly a way with the fairies today. So that photo along with 
lot more sensible links, of course, but the other highlights of our show today, those links will be on the highlights and links page on the pull down menu. Just before we go any further, if you're watching this show on our website rather than YouTube, because you're looking for live captions, apologies due to a bereavement we have not had live captions on wednesday's show or today's however the recordings which we release every evening will be captioned over the weekend so don't worry about missing anything those shows will be available with captions on monday and again apologies but it really is one of those circumstances that nobody can predict or plan for so going back to the beautiful octopus club the beautiful octopus club is based at the albany empire which is a, a kind of theater and arts center isn't it in deptford south london that's seen an awful lot of great disability art and uh, indeed other great art and performance in its time and the beautiful octopus club is a club that's run by and for people with learning difficulties it involves lots of performance lots of multimedia it's just a really fantastic club i mean many years ago i was privileged to play it and um it was really one of the most enjoyable gigs i've ever done i mean you came as well didn't you julie i ran a chill out room which was was fantastic i loved it and i, I was absolutely convinced for five minutes that that would be the the uh the rest of my career is I would be doing chill out rooms forever for, for <laughs> the Octopus Club. I just loved it so much. It was it was such good fun. So what they've got is a whole month's worth of, in, of different things that you can do online, as indeed so have we. And for a week of that, so have Dada Fest, the international festival. But we'll talk about that a little bit closer to the time because Dada Fest runs, I think it's the 27th of November through to the 3rd of December, which is International Day of Disabled People, of course. But the beautiful Octopus Club starts tonight. So I'm going to have to do a bit of juggling here between the laptop that's driving the show, the microphone and the iPad, which, of course, has switched itself off. But here we go. So I'm going to hold this up. This is the yellow of the beautiful Octopus Club. And indeed, a bit later, I'm going to play a little film that shows you a bit more about it. But just to say for now, what it is, is a lot of the events are on Zoom, but they make it very, very easy to book. So you have this interface, which if it's not glaring too much, these kind of bright yellow blocks with nice, big, clear text and pictures. And tonight they open, of course, with a club night that you join in from home. And it starts at seven and it runs at 10. It's always been quite an early club because of people's transport needs and so on. There's two videos that you can prepare in advance. So there's learn the YMCA dance moves with Ned and learn the candy dance moves with Ned. And you can also listen to some of the music in advance. And then they've got this really great aspect to their website, which I have to say we haven't got on our festival website, but we're all learning and we're all swapping information. So I'm sure it's the kind of thing that we might adopt next year if we're digital. But they, every event has a section called how you can get ready. Things to bring for tonight. Glow sticks, disco lights, make sure you have space to dance and put on your best party outfit. I'm not sure this is actually my best party outfit to dress up, to go out to stay in, to dance to the beautiful Octopus Club, but I am 58 and perhaps not the target audience to start with. And then tomorrow afternoon, and I'm just going to have to click this up again, there's an exhibition called The Way I See It. And it's an online exhibition which has been created in partnership not only with Arts Council England, but also Google Arts and Culture. And it's young people's experiences of the pandemic and lockdown. 
and it features as well as visual art, radio and music. And you can come to the event, meet the artist involved, but again, creative activities. And what's so great in the preparation is things to bring. Bring along some art materials like pens and paper, find a quiet and comfortable place to listen and get ready to make and see art. And I just think that's such a clear thing to do. You know, this is what the event is. This is what you need to participate at home. Here's the link. And what really characterizes all of these festivals is they're about being able to join in from home. It's not just about sitting down and watching yet another video. So with our festival, it's our ninth annual Disability History Month festival, which really seems hard to believe, doesn't it, Julie? Um, up to a point, I, I think each festival has I'm, not sure. I'm wondering if the wire is loose in the bottom of Julie's mic, just the, where the XLR goes in or the switch is a bit, because it keeps going in and out. It does. Is that better? Yes, that's much better. Right. I think each each festival has been unique and, and it's brought something special to each year. So for me, it's, it's it, it seems like that this is the ninth one because each one has been remarkable and I do remember each one as well as taking photographs of them you know they, they, they've all been special in their own way yes I mean it's perhaps it's a good time to actually sort of start at the beginning and say together 2012 CIC which stands for community interest company was set up in March 2013 because our 2012 festival had been such a success. The Together 2012 festival was organized by the UK Disabled People's Council, which at that point was based in Stratford, East London, and was the umbrella body for organizations all over the UK that were led by disabled people. And they really wanted to find a way to in, sort of engage and involve local people with the Paralympics. I ended up leading that festival as a volunteer, really because of a completely different hat I wear and have worn for quite a long time, as you can imagine, which is as a co-chair of REGARD. And REGARD is the national LGBTQI plus disabled people's organisation. So REGARD was a member of UKDPC. And when we looked at the member organisations and who could lead on it, I got the job. Well, I would call it a job, but of course it was entirely unpaid. We were due to deliver that festival entirely in August, September 2012. But the venue we were going to use, which was a bespoke venue called London Pleasure Gardens, unfortunately was not a success and closed halfway through the Olympics. And eventually we decided that although we could have done everything still in the summer in different venues, that we would put part of the program into Disability History Month, which is November, December. And at that point was really, really new. And at the end of it, everybody said, oh, that was fantastic. Now we want you to keep doing it. And we don't just want you to do an annual festival. We want you to do a year round program. So we now deliver what we call our clubs program, all of which are operating in some form online. And you can find out many more details about it on our website. So I'm just going to put the, what we call the crawler up, which in a moment will tell you the website address, but it's www.together2012.org.uk. So there's a whole bunch of join in from home activities, but like I say, there's also the clubs program. Usually that's in East London on a weekday morning, free to anybody who can get there, who's a disabled person or is bringing other people with them. But at the moment, those clubs are open to anyone across the UK and beyond. So we'd love to see you. I should have said with the audio description, behind us is a graffiti banner. And that's got images of all of the different art forms we cover from live music, poetry, spoken word, drama, dance, visual art, carnival art, street art, photography, filmmaking, and much, much more. And all of those activities are going to be covered in the festival. But before that, I mean, Robin, I remember you helped us in London 2012 because as well as being a Paralympic swimmer and somebody and an artist in your own right, you also have a PA system. And you came and helped us both with 
sound and with other things and performed and compared and kind of over the first few years of the festival that's how you ended up becoming business director even though actually the west midlands is nowhere near newer <laughs> <laughs> it's relative it's much nearer than new york is um i, I do i know i remember it and and uh um, it was always great fun, um, and I wish I could remember. Is it the Riverside Church, the 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 one where we did the first couple of live events in the festival? Um, in in the well, there's a River Christian Centre in Cannington. Yeah. We used to have the music club there, but in fact, there's a church, Ascension Church, which is divided into two, and part of it's a community centre and part of it's a church. But they've allowed us to perform in the church. We're really what's called a pop-up organisation. We can deliver and do deliver in more usual times venue you know activities in all sorts of different community venues that's partly because there are very very few arts venues in Newham at all and none really outside of Stratford but here we are popping up digitally so actually it's been quite good practice hasn't it so sorry that so yes it was the River Christian Centre or the Ascension Church and, and also I remember us doing a whole day of workshops including a comedy workshop at the wharf was it something wharf where all the, the big blue pillars were in the room i mean it's a while it was ages ago yeah. well you know we have an architect working with us to develop our own art center the david morris cultural center and they did a map of all the places that we delivered events and activities and we absolutely covered the borough so i'm um, including of course quite a number in the olympic park so i can't be entirely sure but another wonderful venue was on the river lee wasn't it and i wonder if it's the house mill at bow that you were thinking of because that's certainly by the water and um, I believe was it's an artificial island originally built in the 19th century to house a gin mill. So, um, but at one point we did an improvised performance of the Titanic there. So yes, over the years, you know, we've only been going eight years, but we've done an awful lot of things and this festival is no different. There's a complete programme on the website, www.together2012.org.uk. And then you can click on each event and find out more about the individual events. What we're doing is we have a kind of, there's two ways. Well, actually, there's three ways that you can access the events. You can join in live by Zoom by clicking on Eventbrite and booking a ticket that way. And there's some information on the website about what to do if you need help with that. Or you can watch it live on YouTube without having to get a ticket or doing anything apart from switching on YouTube. Our channel is Together 2012 CIC, but it will also be running as with this show on the website. Or you can watch it later because everything we do will be recorded and put up and will stay up not just for the festival which runs until the 10th of December but for future enjoyment so it starts next Thursday and we have tickets out there for the event it's a very very special event we're calling it the history makers because we're also celebrating the people who've passed into history this year the people that we've lost we've got wonderful films and performances from Act Up Newham, the cellist Joanne Cox, and an amazing live performance all the way from Croatia by Sign Dance International. So we're going to be hearing much, much more about the festival on our shows going forward. Next Wednesday, we'll be launching one of the projects, which is Jess Starn's Walk With Me. And that's an incredibly innovative project, isn't it, Judy? So what Jess will be doing is taking the lucky selected viewers on a virtual walk using Google Street View. She will facilitate it and she will talk to the person as they're walking and then that walk will be shared with the audience. So that's just one of the very interesting and innovative live art performances we'll be having but there's going to be family activities every Saturday. Effectively, what will happen is there'll be live events every Tuesday and Thursday at seven o'clock. 
with the doors opening, as it were, at 6.30. And then there'll be family activities on, on Saturdays from 3 o'clock. And again, all of that will stay online so families can use it at any time. So we're all really looking forward to it, aren't we? Is there anything you want to add at the moment, Josh? I think you've covered everything. <laughs> You're really looking forward to it, aren't you? Because Josh has been dragged in as the assistant producer. There's nothing like repurposing students. You know, they can't do their research at the moment because it requires to be done in real life. They can't stay in their accommodation. We know what to do with them. So if anybody wants, do you remember those books they used to do cartoons? It's 101 Uses of a Dead Cat, wasn't it? I feel there needs to be one for students for the 2020s. <laughs> just, just students. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, not dead ones. They seem to be surviving quite well. But um, yeah, 101 uses of what? Um, redundant students? They're not redundant. They're just... Redundant students. I've, I've right. still got a lot of uni stuff to do. <laughs> yeah. I am They're still at, at uni, but yeah. Display. I've got to say, I'm going to. I mean, I'm looking forward to the festival, um, both hopefully to take part at some point. Well, certainly the the, the end party, the rap party, as it were. Um, but just to see some of the stuff that we, you know, that's coming in um, from artists that we don't normally get to see uh, within um, our kind of weekly stuff, but a lot of which we've met within the weekly stuff. So Jess, um, you know, Sign Dance Collective. Um, you know, and and, and others uh, who who we're now going to kind of move from hearing them talk about their stuff to actually, you know, really embracing it and 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 enjoying the spectacle that they deliver. Yes, and I think that's one of the joys about this festival because it's online. We don't have to worry about tiresome things like whether we can pay for train tickets, hotel booths bills and food not booze we never pay for that but uh, so we've got artists from all over the UK instead of it having to be quite London centric we advertised it as an open competition in February so again it you know there's quite a number of artists we've not come across before so Jess Starnes for example who's since appeared on the show we didn't have any contact with till she applied for a festival commission so like I say there's going to be much much more of that but we're going to just move on now and talk a little bit more about our Join In From Home programme. As part of the Join In From Home programme, we've also had Stara Plurger, who's a member of our Act Up, Act Up Newham Associate Drama Company, but has also been demonstrating accessible, inclusive arts and crafts activities for us. So I'm going to pop this one on first. For anybody who can't see, what Stara is doing is using a form of, I think it's a plastic clay, but it's a very easily available kind of domestic clay that you can just put into your own domestic oven, or indeed some of them you can just air dry. And she's pressing leaves into it. And then once that's all finished, colouring them and making them as winter festival direct. Dear idea, you can tell. I'm glad it's Friday. Winter festival decorations. Oh, hi. I'm Dara. And I made leaves. For the tree for Christmas. Bye.
And I thought that was such a simple and effective thing to do. You know, she's cut out or I think perhaps had some assistance to cut the shapes out once she's pressed the um, leaves in to leave a pattern and then also poked a hole in with a knitting needle or similar so that you've got something to put ribbons through to hang up and then painted them gold once they were done. I believe it's a clay called Daz. So I'll put a link in to that page as well. And... Um, and to be honest, I mean, I like shiny things around the house. I think if I was going to be making those shiny leaves, I might be inclined to leave them up all the time. Just one more word on that. Stara was using a metallic acrylic paint, I think. But I've discovered recently something called gilding wax which is actually a brilliant kind if you want something to be shiny because it only only comes in sort of shiny metallic colors it's so much easier than using a paintbrush you literally just dab it on with a cloth or rub it in it dries what within about half an hour doesn't yeah, it really quickly and covers often in one coat since i discovered it i've got purple ones i've got silver ones i've got gold ones i've got green ones we have all sorts of metallic bits around the house that would actually have required my hands to do things they would have found quite difficult to put three coats of acrylic paint on so in fact, as it happens, just behind me, this is, well, well this is a, a hardwood walking stick and it's been coloured in purple with gilding wax and that took just one coat. Now, painting it with a paintbrush would have been really, really tricky. So that is my access tip. But also, I mean, it's just a really, really good surface, isn't it? It's much shinier. I think the, the pigment is more intense than in the acrylic paints. I mean, happily, the cats don't stay still for very long. <laughs> I mean, the other, just in terms of clay or, or other materials, certainly in the past um, with Emily, we've used salt dough, um, which I can't tell you off the top of my head how to make, but it's, lit, you know, it's stuff out of the cupboard. And actually, I was wondering when you're talking about the gilding wax, whether or not it's an airtight finish. So, in fact, if you did use something like salt, though, it wouldn't then dry out inside because the wax would keep it, you know, maintain its integrity. Yeah, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, I can't answer all of those questions, but I think it probably would. Now, I seem to remember that earlier in the year, Stara did actually demonstrate salt dough for us. Um these days, particularly during lockdown, it's very, very difficult to buy flour. So salt dough is pretty much homemade. Yeah, it's like homemade kind of clay, but flour and water and salt, isn't it? So it could be that it's actually easier to get hold of if you've got the money to spare, you know, sort of pound shop plastic clay than a bag of flour at the moment. But yes, in more normal times, I would definitely say don't worry about that. Just make your own. I'm going to pop a video on just for a few minutes to tell you a bit more about the Join In From Home programme. Together 2012 is running a Join In From Home programme from our website together2012.org.uk. Click on the link at the top of the page, Join In From Home, to go straight to the main page where you have a wide range of accessible, inclusive, creative activities, mostly using things that you would already have at home. At the top of the page and throughout the pages, you will also see videos in British Sign Language to translate the site for deaf people. These videos can also be useful if you have difficulties reading and you simply want to hear more of the content. The Join In From Home programme is based on the activities that we would usually be running in East London. So, for example, we have an art club which usually operates on a Tuesday with craft-based activities and on a Friday morning for drawing and painting. Here you can join in with the Arts Club's Hands Project and celebrate your uniqueness and membership of the human race. There are full instructions on the linked page here. But essentially, we invite you to draw around your hand on a piece of card. It could be an old cereal packet. Cut the shape out, turn it over, 
and decorate it with anything you would like to do. It could be paints, crayons, glitter, collage, beads, leaves, anything you can think of. Photograph your hand or hands and send it to us at tv at together2012.org.uk. We'll add it to our video installation and share it on social media. Our music club usually meets on the first Friday of each month. We have an open mic session and we invite everybody to play along with percussion instruments. So here you can learn how to make your own percussion instruments from recycled materials. And you can also join in a percussion workshop from last summer in terms of carnival percussion. So these three instruments are used most often in carnival. We have a shaker and a go-go and a hand drum. So this is how to make a recycled shaker, a recycled go-go and a recycled hand drum. You can also, if you're technically minded, make your own tactile sound instrument. This does require a few simple electronics, but is a very interesting and exciting project as part of our Vibrofusion ongoing work. You can also listen with Together. We have Spotify playlists created by Robin Sergener, also known as our TV presenter, Angry Fish. And we also have two classical music playlists from Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra, including one that's uniquely suited to people who are feeling very unwell. I'm not quite sure what's happening from this end, but on that, that film ultimately seemed to freeze. I don't know whether it was freezing at your end, Robin. It did. We were just literally about to panic and then not panic and come in and start talking in case we'd lost you. <laughs> well, of course, we may have lost everybody. The signal is practically black. We have a thing that comes up from our providers, B. Live, which could have six green bars, but it's struggling to get one little orange one. I suspect there's something going on in America at the moment that is actually making the internet even slower than usual on a Friday. But we do notice that it's an awful lot more problematic on a Friday than on a Monday. I won't put the Beautiful Octopus Club Festival video on next in case we have the same problems. I'm going to come over to the West Midlands and say, what do you recommend as something for the weekend? Okay, do you want to go first today, Josh? I can do. Uh, the first thing that I was going to recommend for the weekend was a series on YouTube called Five Levels, um, which has been going on for I think about three years, and they kind of come out periodically, kind of every now and again. Um, but they released one recently, so it kind of popped back up in my YouTube recommends this for you kind of list of videos. Um, and basically what it is, is they have an expert in whatever field that the video is on. Um, and then they have to kind of have a conversation and explain that in five levels. So it's a child, a teenager, a um, college, a university student, a postgraduate student, and then another expert, kind of a, a, a peer. Um, and they cover all sorts of things from kind of nanotechnology to sleep to computer hacking and it's just really really interesting um to kind of see how how things develop from like each each level um you also get some quite kind of cute questions and answers from the kids as well sometimes um but i was watching one something that julie would probably find quite interesting there was one on gravity um and it kind of started out with the child that gravity is the thing that stops you from floating and it ended up with the expert that, you know, is gravity a hologram? So it kind of, it's quite interesting to see how that conversation developed. Um, but yeah, there's there's a whole kind of series on, on of different things. And it's just really interesting to kind of watch and listen to. Okay, over to me. Um, I've only got one for this weekend, other than other TV stuff. But um, I, it's, it's, in some ways, it's quite a big one. Um, I decided that I would go homespun again. So this is all entirely of your own doing. Um, I thought it would be a really good thing to make a lockdown bucket list. So uh, come up 
you know, spend the weekend perhaps you could start them but coming up with a, a series of a bit close to the mic all of a sudden sorry is that better um yeah so we come up with a series of, of of activities that you can do at home um that can be practical it can be creative um and I, the very quick list that i threw together um was to play board games or card games and if you are on your own I was looking at there are lots of online games you can play on your own. Um, were oh, one was checking the cupboards to see if you have the ingredients to cook something just for your enjoyment. Do a jigsaw, read a book. Um, the next one I come up with was I thought was quite interesting was write a letter to yourself to document how you're feeling at this point in time. Um, declutter your favourite space. Sit down for three minutes at the beginning of every hour and focus on you. Watch your movie. And I guess the list could go on, but that was just a sort of flavor of things that you could put on your own mini, I mean, you know, bucket list being something to do before the end of lockdown rather than kicking the bucket, please. <laughs> I think that, I mean, that's, I think it's really inspiring. I mean, so many of us have got things like jigsaws stuck in the cupboard and you think, oh, well, I'll do them at Christmas. And then at Christmas, you just think, I think I've just eaten too much and there's too much in this <laughs> and the jigsaw that you've just got for Christmas goes in the cupboard as well. Yeah, I think these are the times, aren't they? You know, all that time that we're managing to sort of save from not going out. And of course, we'd love to go out to do the things we love to do, but there's an awful lot of going out for things that you don't really love to do. Um, who wouldn't rather play a board game or do a jigsaw? I might add to that is make up your own board game. You know, it's something I think I've done a couple of times only, but each time it's just been really fun to kind of take a sort of basic idea like snakes and ladders and twist it or find something completely different. Have you ever done that, Julie? No, I, 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 um, I tend to sort of... Uh... I, I think, on again. Yeah, sweetie, I think you're pulling the bottom of your cable out. <laughs> cat sabotaged it when she... Yeah, did. that's it. I think it probably was, actually. It was the little tabby person. I, I tend to play board games by myself, so I have left hand against right hand. <laughs> <laughs> I've always done that since I was a little kid. Does one win more than the other? There's a very, very cross tabby sitting there going, it was her. <laughs> me it was her um i tend to cheat <laughs> <laughs> but does one hand cheat more than the other uh no they're 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 pretty balanced actually well in that case i think i'll come on have you got something for the weekend for us yes <clears throat> i've got i've got a few things uh the thing that that has caught my eye this week is autumn watch which i love um, and they've had four live streams. And that's streams. a BBC Two programme, isn't it, from eight till nine? Not every day, three days a week. Um, I was about to say that, actually. <laughs> but yes, it's a BBC programme on BBC Two from eight to nine, three days a week. And here comes the tabby. Um, <clears throat> and it's got it's got four live streams up on it, which has been lovely. Uh, there's uh, one in the New Forest. I'm not sure where the second one is. I think that might be in the New Forest as well, uh, with a bird feeder in it. Uh, the one in the New Forest that doesn't have a bird feeder has got a little sort of nesty place with uh, with apples and fresh vegetables and things like that. That a little mouse, a little harvest mouse, comes to eat. And then there's two on the Isle of May. And at the moment, the tide is coming in, so all the seals that live on that harbour are having a, a whale of a time, <laughs> having a seal of a time. Uh, so, you know, they're having a, a really good, uh, it's an opportunity. I think everybody likes it when the, when the tide comes in because it brings fresh food. Okay, well, I'm assuming you've just stopped at one for now. So yes. I will step in and say next week is Captioning Awareness Week. And that's being organised by our friends at Stage Text. Stage Text is a fantastic organisation that does live captioning in theatre performances. And what they've organised is a whole week, which is going to be shown for free 
on a website called scenesaver.co.uk. We've talked about Scene Saver before. It was founded right at the beginning of lockdown one. Anybody can upload their performance videos to Scene Savers and set a price, which may be free, but is usually paid for people to download and watch. And it's a way for independent theatre makers in particular to be able to make some money from their recordings or indeed from their live streams from empty theatres. But for this particular week, Everything is going to be free. There's 32 plays available next week, wow. all with captions. And they include a number of award winners. So Good Girl, which is described as a bold, provocative and laugh out loud coming of age tale. Groomed, which is the story of a Japanese soldier who refuses to stand down. There's one about the invention of the sax saxophone. There's the personal tale of a betrayed schoolboy. And I think all of those come from Soho Theatre. There's even a one-off performance of Scrounger, which I seem to remember being very famous but never got to see. It stars Athena Stevens and it's showing for, from one day only on Saturday the 14th, as in next Saturday, from the Finborough Theatre. There's The Jury, which is a comedy drama about a jury in a high-profile case who are logging on to Zoom to make a decision. So, again, I think a lot of these plays are actually very new. That's coming from the Park Theatre. So this is really great. And then next week on the 12th, which I think is next Wednesday... They're going to have a panel discussion at two o'clock and they're talking about things like how captioning and stage plays and things have adjusted since COVID, how audiences have changed, how that's affected engagement, how to, you know, looking at what we've learned over the last eight months and how that goes forward into the future. So it's a really thoughtful week. You know, it's a great week to experience captions, probably for the first time for many people, across a whole wide range of theatre performances, but also to think about it. So if you're particularly a theatre artist, do think about logging on to next Wednesday's event. That's on Zoom and all of the links will be on our highlights and links page. Judy, what else have you got for us? Well, I had a look at Eventbrite. Um, and it, I just wanted to see if there's anything free coming up. And there's loads. There's loads and loads and loads of stuff. Uh, it's ticketable, but it's all free. So I, I just had a, a flick through very quickly. And I looked at, there was a, a workshop on how to prune your trees, which I thought would be very interesting. Uh, there's also a Diwali um, celebration from Birmingham tomorrow, although Diwali isn't until the 14th, I think. Um, but it's... Uh, it's a, Apparently, it's an annual celebration that comes from a, a famous place in Birmingham, but I don't know Birmingham, so Robin, you probably know more than I do. Um, and also, it's Strictly Come Dancing, uh, which is one of my fave raves. It's uh, Saturday and Sunday night. You have the dancing couples on the Saturday. There's an opportunity to vote via the BBC website, um, and there's also... Uh, a really funny blog by Heidi Stevens and The Guardian, which is worth following during the show because she she really captures a lot of the sort of quirkiness of it. Yes, and also takes the pee just very slightly indeed. We're, the guys are looking horrified again. They're just not <laughs> the kind of men who watch Strictly and apparently the women they live with aren't either people who watch Strictly, but we're not quite sure whether that's through choice or peer pressure. Have you got anything else for us that you would recommend on TV, Robin? Uh, Josh has. And it, it's by choice that they don't watch Strictly, just to say. <laughs> um, yeah, a couple of the things that, that I had. Um, one of them is an app. It's a free app called Firework Tap or Fireworks Tap. Um, and very simply, you, you tap your phone and it makes fireworks. Um <laughs> And you can kind of swipe to get different things. And the longer you hold it, you get kind of different colors and explosions, I guess. Um, so if you do want to kind of play around with some fireworks without having the danger of real fireworks, you can do it all digitally on your phone, um, which looks like it could be quite good fun. Um, 
I think particularly with the sound off, because I often think mm. fireworks are beautiful and the noise is so unnecessary. But when you've got animals, mm. I remember my last dog was phobic about fireworks and I bought one of those desensitization CDs. And even when it was inaudible to humans, it would still just set her off. It didn't desensitize her at all. So, yes, I would just say whether it's on your phone or not, put the sound off. But I would love to actually I'm going to try. I would love to see something that looked like fireworks without all the noise and the smoke. Um, and then in terms of TV, um, kind of to repeat it to sound like a Star Trek Discovery and Star Wars The Mandalorian are both continuing. Um, which are on Netflix and then Disney Plus, respectively. Um, but then Netflix, I think it came out this week or last weekend, uh, a limited series called The Queen's Gambit, which is a, it's set, I think, yeah, mainly in kind of the 60s, mid to late 60s um, in the States. And it's about a, a young girl that's an, an orphan who's a kind of chess prodigy. Um, and it's only seven episodes. Um, and I'm with, I think we've watched five um, and it, I'm really enjoying it. Um, Mum and I are both watching it and we're both kind of really, really enjoying it. And it's really interesting. Um, so, yeah, re recommend that as as well. Even if you don't like chess, if you have no idea how to play chess, which mum doesn't, uh, she's still enjoying it. So, Well, there's a fantastic film on either networks or on either Netflix or Prime. And is it is the is it the Queen of Cutway? Queen of I don't Again, know. It's a film. It's a it's a true story. It's about a young homeless African woman who learns to play chess and becomes an international champion. And again, I know nothing about chess, but it was an absolutely gripping film. I'll I'll find the right title and stick it up under the highlights and links page. There's always the ongoing drama, isn't there, coming from Washington, D.C. at the moment? Well, it's all you could just put the news channel on. <laughs> it's, it's the slowest moving drama I've ever watched, I think, the 2020 yeah. election. So moving swiftly on, has anybody got anything else they would like to recommend for the weekend? I, I go, oh, go on, go on, go on. Go on. So going back to making your own board games, um, We've done that. I, I've done that with friends from uni, kind of making one up entirely. And I think we made the rules up as we went along for that, to be honest, <laughs> depending on how we felt at the moment and um, whether somebody deserved a reward or not. Um, but also, we played uh, Monopoly, where we just took the the Monopoly board and all the kind of prices and things is the same, um, but replaced all of the kind of properties and utilities and kind of chance cards with mostly just inside jokes and things that we thought were really funny um that if you weren't our friends would probably make absolutely no sense um but we thought it was hilarious when you could go around and like uh, properties were like stupid stories that people had you know the bush that someone fell into was like, instead of marilyn own place and things like that um if you have fun and of course so, lots of people well. that yeah, lots of people are locked down in student households or shared households. And I, yeah, I think making up your own board game if you're locked down with a group is a fantastic thing to do. Because like you say, you can get wilder and wilder. And I think there's, you know, if you're looking at things like snakes and ladders where you're trying to get to something and you're being blocked, there's all sorts of parallels at the moment, you know, where... You'd like to go out, but your PPE hasn't arrived still, Newham Council, you know, that kind of thing. But, um, but you know, yeah, there's kind of how do you get on a plane and so on and so forth. I think there's all sorts of things that a group, you know, how do you actually get out of your university when they've just erected a fencing around it? Tear it down. <laughs> Tear it down. <laughs> well, there is always that one. Tonight there's going to be a breakout. <laughs> Yes, let's not even think about that. So I'm going to say goodbye for the weekend and we will be back on Monday with lots more news of our festival, the beautiful Octopus Festival, Dada Fest and Caption Awareness Week. While Robin is getting his guitar, so if you just want to sit there for a moment, Robin, I'm going to put a video on about Beautiful Octopus Club so you've got an opportunity to change over. But I thought we could just go to Josh and Julie for some goodbyes first. I'll just say quickly, bye-bye.
Bye bye. Okie doke. So I'm going to put this video on, and then traditionally we always end the show with a song. What have you got for us today, Robin? Uh, today I'm doing a song called Action Dan, uh, which is um, a bit of a disability rights anthem um, and will make sense. Well, I like to think of it as an anthem anyway. So you are, everyone can join in because the words you need to say freedom and now and civil rights now and choices now. Hopefully it will make sense as I play it. Brilliant. So I'm going to put this on and see you all on Monday. Okay, so as I say, this song is called Action Dan. Um, Dan being a reference to the Direct Action Network, for those of you who remember. What do we want? Freedom. When do we want it now? What do we want? Freedom. When do we want it now? What do we want? Freedom. When do we want it now? What do we want? Freedom. When do we want it now? To demonstrate it is our right and one that we'll assert. So grab the hand of a man called Dan and make our voices heard. What do we want? Civil rights. When do we want them now? What do we want? Civil rights. When do we want them now? What do we want? Civil rights. When do we want them now? What do we want? Civil rights. When do we want them now? So come along and join our fight. Stand up for who you are. Join the march. Shout with pride. You're proud of who you are. What do we want? Choices. When do we want them now? What do we want? Choices. When do we want them now? What do we want? Choices. When do we want them now? What do we want? Choices. When do we want them now? We've had enough of closed mind fools had enough of hate it's time to take the lead from action dan it's time for a free a free state time for time for time for a fear free state what do we want freedom when do we want it now what do we want Freedom, when do we want it now? Now this is the bit when, if it was a live gig, you'd join in. So what do we want? Freedom, when do we want it now? What do we want? Freedom, when do we want it now? What do we want? Freedom, when do we want it now? What do we want? 
freedom when we want it now. What do we want? Freedom. When do we want it now? Thank you and have a fantastic weekend.